Hello and welcome everybody to this amazing session. Hope you guys having an amazing day. It's Emil Klasson here talking. And today we have an amazing, amazing guest, Shima. Shima, she is a passionate entrepreneur, executive and business coach, heart intelligence facilitator, certified relationship coach, motivational speaker, and founder of Coaching Mindfulness Academy Infinite Love. Now, Shima, she has more than 15 years in international business development, organizational, and individual consulting, coaching, and mentoring. She speaks English, Spanish, German, Persian fluently. I mean, guys, this is crazy. Now, she's traveled more than 180 days a year for the past 15 years, and she's lived in the six different countries, three continents. A part of her academic study and master degrees in didactic educational activities. She has studied NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and organization coaching, leadership mindset training, relationship coaching, communication, mindfulness, psychology, and among them also quantum physics. So welcome Shima to today's show, today's interview. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Emil, for this great introduction and thank you for your time. It's an honor for me to be here and share this time with your audience. Thank you so much. Amazing, 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 Shima. So, yes, my pleasure to have you here. It's an amazing background that you have. I've heard amazing things. You have created such an amazing community around you. You surround yourself with amazing individuals. And so it's Truly my pleasure to have you here today. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ask you, because today I was talking with a couple of friends and clients that I work with, and they always mention back to their anger issues or some, they struggle with anger management. So I know you have great techniques and great knowledge on how to handle this. So if you could just tell me, what would you do in, if you were in their shoes. Okay, that's a great topic. And um, I think anger, anger management is very important in our life. And we have to first understand what is anger, where is it coming from? And what is the side effect of not being able to manage our anger in a healthy way? And when we learn how to manage our anger, actually the anger becomes a gift for us. Now, at the end of this, I will tell you how the anger, that's something that always is um, considered as something negative, can play a completely different and positive role in our life if we learn how to manage it. So let's like use a, a very simple example, what is anger? Imagine a little four years old child. You wanna get into the car with, you don't want to let the child sit behind the wheel to drive your car, and you don't want to stuff the child in the boot neither, right? Right. So you need to know where to put the child to have a safe trip. Your anger is the same. It's like a little child is not <laughs> safe if you allow that to drive, <laughs> and is not safe if you stuff it in the boot. So we have two types of the people when we're talking about anger management. One type that we call them eruptor, the ones that they get really angry and they get like a volcano, they erupt the emotions and they start to shout or break things or really get everything out in an unhealthy way. And we have another type, which are normally the pleaser, pleaser personalities, that they always want to please others and uh, to play the good, good girl or good boy role. And uh, those type of personalities, they, they basically uh, suppress their anger. None of these two actually are healthy. Okay. So why is not healthy? Why, what, what anger does to a body? Anger will, normally you have the anger response in your body, when you are having a threat, you know, you're, when you're receiving a threat or something um, is considered as a threat for you. Right. What happens when you're receiving this, this message, um, your brain 
considers that you are in a dangerous situation, in a threatful situation. So it will release stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline and put your body in fight or flight mode. And what is that means that you can fight, fight back. You have a lot of adrenaline, you can fight back and you can save yourself or you can fly away and you can run and hide yourself, which is a lot of cortisol in your body. If this continues on a long run, you're going to have, um, you can, your body goes out of balance. The pH of the blood goes out of balance, goes uh, acidy. And when the pH goes acid, you can develop any type of disease. Basically, stress is number one killing factor in the world. Scientific studies shows that um, over 80% of primary doctor visits are due to stress, over 80%. And only 3% get a stress management technique and a stress management help. So any type of disease that you're talking about, like heart disease, uh, cardio, cardiovascular, or I don't know, uh, skin uh, cancer, different type of cancer, all of them come, come down to your emotions, how you're managing your emotions come down to, to the stress. So, and anger is one of those situations right? Whether you're stuffing your anger, you are having a lot of stress hormone in your body, or you are erupted completely, and you're again having a lot of stress hormones in your body. So uh, both of them uh, create this disease in your body. So you need to really learn and become aware of it, what you are doing to your body. So you need to learn how to manage it. The best techniques to manage the anger are is through mindfulness, okay? So maybe you want to know what is mindfulness. Exactly. I, I would think that the audience would love to know exactly what mindfulness is and how they can take more advantage out of it. Okay. So mindfulness means to have your attention on a particular single act at the same time means um, if you're eating, for instance, you're, you're having your lunch, you can fully be present in the taste, in the texture, in the smell, in everything of the food that you are uh, putting in your mouth. Now, if you are having your lunch, watching the TV or thinking about something which is like, okay, what, what I'm going to do after that or what, thinking about something that happened before, you're not mindful. Right. You're into, uh, at the same time, you're multitasking. multitasking. So to be mindful means you should be completely present in one single act at the time. Right. And um, so some people, they, they take this concept, uh, they mistake the concept with putting your mind in blank, right? Many yeah. times when they talk about mindfulness, they say, okay, put your mind in blank. And basically that is mind emptiness. You don't want to put your mind in blank. You want to be completely focused on one single task. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So so basically, you know, being mindful is being in the now, really enjoying and being activating the senses of like being present. Right now, I'm listening to you, I'm looking to you, and I'm hearing the sound of my words as they come out and being fully present in what it is now. And I think that's so beautiful said as well, because at the end of the day, now is what matters in 15 seconds or in 15 minutes or in a year, we don't know what's going to happen, right? So I love that. I love that. Question for you, Shima, because I have a friend of mine and he he's quite similar to me. Um, and, uh, you know, growing up, I've been, a, I, I think, honestly, I've been, I've had this pleaser personality, right? Like, want everyone to like me, so on. So I've developed. And so he came to me and he's like, Man, I have this feeling of like, I got to please everyone. And um, for example, even if let's say, because he's trying to shift uh, out of a group of people that he no longer wants to be, or maybe wants to bring some of them 
some of them with him that see the potential. Now, he tells me that every time he's trying to put out himself or show his new development, his new him, he feels bad about doing that because he feels guilt or pity of them, other friends not being in that level or not wanting that. So what would you say to him? Mm -hmm. So uh, basically he feels bad uh, to, to express himself and to express uh, what he has achieved and to share with others. Basically, yes. Okay. So that is uh, mainly comes back from his childhood. I mean, all everything, the personality, 85% of uh, our personality is built by the age between, uh, we are six years old. And normally between two to six, because that's the time our brain is on the theta brain wave, acting on theta brain wave, like watching, walking around in a basically meditative or hypnosis state and grabbing and recording everything. So what we have to see what happened in his past first. If, if you ask me, I would go and sit with him and see what happened when he was between two to six and how he was treated by expressing himself at home and, and by people or the take carers or parents whenever he wanted to talk about what he achieved or what he, he made okay. and see where that mentality come from. Okay. okay. Because when we come, become aware of the mentality that where is it coming from, then it's very easy to shift it because we understand that, okay, I got this mentality only because of survival. It was a survival instinct. I got it because I could please my mother or I could please my father or I could please this or that. Then you become aware of it and you know that you're no, no longer in danger of a life threat. So you can let go of that behavior. So it's very powerful to just talk about it a little bit about that time and see how your parents supported you or your takers at that age when you were talking about your, um, your success or everything that you were doing. That's very important. So you will break the pattern. It's very, you go deep in a very short time and you break the pattern. Now, if you want to see, okay, now I am um, here and I want to share with others about what I have achieved. Okay, so the, re the question is, why do you want to share it? Are you going to share it because you want to motivate them? What is the reason behind? Or you want to share it because you want to show them something? So if my mindset is that I'm sharing it because I want to show them that I'm better than them, then there is a contradiction, of course, in my mindset that, okay, I'm, I'm already doing something bad because I'm showing off. Right. But if I'm sh telling them because I want to, to raise them, to motivate them, to help them, then that is great uh, motivation. And the way you're going to express it is going to be completely different. I, that's huge that's huge that is amazing yeah and i i tend to think as well like when it comes down to uh, you know exactly acting upon certain things that you tend to act i think the mindset that your intentions behind them can really express a difference uh, on the way you act them so i totally agree on that and going back to anger management to and, um, you know, really, you know, when feeling frustrated or stressed at certain points, do you think that people should always dig back to where does this come from? Meaning that we're programming stage of zero to six. Well, that is very difficult. If you're angry, <laughs> go that back. So this is um, the, the, the previous reply was regarding to a friend who wanted to show um, or, or, or express himself and his feeling to others. But when we come back to the anger management, if something happened or you're in a conversation that something occurred that makes you angry, then we are going to use some techniques that are based on mindfulness that specifically we're going to talk about four of them that help you to manage your anger in a healthy way. Okay? And the first one and most important one is just breathing exercise. Because your distance to your breath, to, to your peace, is one breath away. Your distance to your peace is one breath away. So how are we going to do that? We are just going to inhale from our nose. 
Imagine a cool, cold, blue air is coming inside your nose. And you're going to exhale from your mouth and imagining a red hot air is coming out of your mouth. So let's do that together. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Inhale this cool blue, blue air into your nose. And exhale the red air out of your mouth. And another time. And one more time. How do you feel now? I feel great. I feel great. It's crazy how only three breaths already <laughs> make a huge difference. It does make a huge difference. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just the breathing, uh, the most important thing that we don't know how to manage it. You know, they say manage your breath, manage your life. It's very important. So how do we breathe? And especially when we are in a situation that uh, we feel threatened and we feel angry, the easiest way that you can manage your anger and you can do it at any given moment. You don't need any specific um, uh, circumstances or space or something. You can do it just as your breath. So you start to breathe deeply and slowly. Put Imagine the cool blue air going in and the visualization of the color helps you a lot to cool down. And then you exhale. And normally I say to my to my breath, I say mentally, slow down, slow down. If you just say that mentally, slow down, you are commanding your breath to slow down. So you really don't need to put any effort to to reduce the speed of your of your breath. You just tell command. Slow down. And you realize all of a sudden you're breathing much slower and deeper. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you are when you are engaging your breathing uh, basically into the much calmer um, pace, you're activating the parasy parasympathetic nervous system. And now you're sending the message to your brain that you are safe. Because once you receive the threat and you got angry, the message that your brain received is that you are not safe. So it should save you. And that's why it released the cortisol and adrenaline and like you breathe much faster. And um, then, then you, you have all this stamina to run away or to, to hide, right? But now when you breathe slowly, you're sending this message to your brain that I'm safe. And now the brain can focus on releasing the healing hormones or even oxytocin or, or dopamine in your body, which are feel-good hormones. Okay, so this is the first thing to do to, to breathe. And now imagine you are in a fight, in the middle of a fight with your, with your um, wife or husband or roommate or, or colleague. Or... So it's a um, difficult situation. You keep hearing the words you don't want to hear. Your anger is just flaming and you're getting uh, more and more angry. And now what are you going to do? Um, only breathing is not helping you or is not finishing. It's making you calmer, but still you are very angry. So uh, the second technique that I would recommend you to do is to name your emotion. Mm -hmm. Like, I am feeling angry like saying that, or I feel tension in my shoulders, or I feel tension in my back. When right. you name it, already you're sending the different response to your nervous system. By just naming it, you're already switching between, between two sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Should so, you name it to yourself? To your yes. Partner? No, to yourself. To yourself. To yourself. To yourself. Okay. okay. 
So if you are, um, normally I, my, I add my advice to couples that are like in that situation is that one of them better you leave the room or go for a walk, don't stay in the same room and, and try to, to avoid. And when you are angry to avoid to have com- conversations because it's not going to get anywhere good for you. Once you're calm, you can come back and, and communicate in an effective way. So normally I tell them to go for a walk or go outside and then um, you can go to the next steps, uh, which for instance, name your emotion or also tap into the compassion. That is the third technique. Do it differently from the part of compassion means you tell yourself, I am hurting myself right now. You know, when you're angry, you know that when you're angry, you are, uh, you are having a lot of stress hormones in your body, which are affecting your well-being and health. So you tell yourself, and from a point of compassion, that I'm hurting myself right now. What can I do or how could I do it differently? Mm. Ask yourself this question. Again, by asking this question and activating the compassion, you again send a different type of hormones. You're again releasing different type of hormones in your body, like if, um, oxytoxin, as we mentioned before. So just by simple technique, just asking, bringing the compassion, you start to activate those parts of the brain that release the oxytoxin in your body. So you start to feel better. Right. Okay, so which is this is coming based on self-love. Uh, that is one of our main teaching that to start to have compassion for yourself and love yourself and and uh, and knowing that, okay, if this is making me angry, it's not the right place to stay right now and I have to distance from it and I have to do it differently. Right, right. I love, I love that. I love that. And I truly agree that compassion is is really powerful, it's so mm-hmm. powerful. So, Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And also if you're the type of pleaser that you don't wanna show your anger and you are really putting it in, you're really stuffing your anger. And I would recommend you to feel it, at least to feel your anger because it's important. Many times you're stuffing your anger, but this will create long-term issues and, and health issues in your body. So if you have to clench your fist and if you have to say no, do it. But don't take everything in, right? I don't recommend you to erupt and go and shout. But if you have to feel it in your body, see where is in your body going, where, where the anger is going in your body, feel it and allow this to be expressed in your body in a healthy way. Just don't stuff it just because you think you don't see it is not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I One of the things I like to do when I, I feel like heavy on my shoulders or stressed out or, you know, anger, I love to go to nature and just shout, like yeah. shout like crazy. Like there's, you know, just like let everything go. <laughs> like last weekend I was actually uh, by a, by the river no one there just me i went in the river and cold water as well you know and i was just like it's so cold it just made me shout and release everything it was like ah! and after i just felt how my whole body just came down and just all the anger out and just felt like an immense feeling of abundance amazing yeah yeah so I, I think feeling those emotions. And... This is beautiful because because you went there to the nature and you could release your anger. You didn't release it on someone. You went to the nature and you just get clean. <laughs> you get it out and you got the cold, cold water, which is really good for immunity. So you did all that. You expressed it in a healthy way right you didn't let it be there and and because when we let it be there it's really creating a lot of health issues right in your body so very good very good and number four is to inquire inquire means to ask to to ask um genuinely what this is going to teach me or what the anger is trying to tell me or to show me that I am, I am unwilling to see. 
You know, the reason we become angry, the other things, the programmings and conditioning that we have at our childhood, something triggers that, you know. So when you are honest with yourself and asking what this anger wants to show me, then your anger becomes your gift because it becomes your biggest teacher. Mm. So try to listen. And um, one of the best way to actually get the message behind your anger is to write it down, to write the question down and release all your expectations and allow the answer to come to you. Mm. You will be surprised how much information are there that you cannot see clearly. But the moment you ask and you write your question, all the answers come to you and, and, and flow after your question. Mm. So you're going to learn a lot from it. That's amazing. And would you say when you write it down that you just write the first thing that comes? I've heard that it's better not to like really use your mind or overthink it just to like the first thing that comes normally comes from the heart, right? Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. 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 So it's like intuitive writing. You know, you don't really use your brain. You don't really go through analyzing it and say, oh, no, this is not correct or this. You just write down everything that comes. Yes. And you will be amazed because this is one of the techniques I'm using for many years, not only for anger management. It's just for uh, receiving the guidance and receiving answers for any questions that I have. I just write it down, write the question. And in a minute, I write in front of it the answer. Most of the time, even my autograph and handwriting is different in the answer. I, I'm intrigued. And I think the audience would be super intrigued as well. Could you please tell us an example when you have done it and you've been able to get a clear answer or just something that led into a creation or into something that you yet didn't know? Absolutely. Can you <laughs> it, this part is actually a little bit uh, just recently it's something that is in my head that happened recently okay. as I'm going through the um, pregnancy I had a lot of nausea and um, a lot of nausea and dizziness and this is completely new experience for me so uh, after four months they said like after three months you're going to get better and four months passed I didn't get better it was four months and a half and like um, I, um, I was like 18 weeks. And um, one day I wake up, I feel better. I started to do my uh, morning uh, yoga and meditation. And the moment I want to do my workout, I got dizzy and I just want to vomit. And I got very angry because all my routine, all my life routine, morning routine has been changed dramatically since I got pregnant. So it was like, really, I got really frustrated that moment. And with all my frustration, I wrote on a paper. No, first, first I sit and said, what the hell do you want from me? <laughs> what? I, I was, <laughs> how much more is four months and a half? And how much more? Why I am feeling so sick? So I was super frustrated. And um, a message come to my head and say, write it down. So I got pen and paper and I wrote in a really, really um, angry way, I, like a frustrated way. What is happening to me and why I'm nauseous all the time? Yeah. And immediately I started to write the answer. And the answer was that the reason is that you didn't accept fully the progress of your pregnancy yet. The changes that your body is going through and the hormonal changes and also the physical changes. So then the answer, the next answer come. You're so afraid of getting fat that you are constantly looking in the, at the, in the mirror and looking at yourself and say, oh, I'm getting fat, I'm getting fat. And every food that you put in your mouth, you are putting it back. Because you're sending this message to your body that you shouldn't eat because you're getting big. And then I have this letter. It just like happened recently. So that's why I'm sharing it with you in this question. And it was so empowering because it was eye-opening for me. I couldn't find out the reason I'm sick all the time. So it, it said, it continued to um, accept fully the process of pregnancy 
and um, and affirm and, and repeat this affirmation. I'm a healthy, happy pregnant, and uh, I accept fully this process and the changes that is happening in my body. So the process of pregnancy, I accepted fully from the beginning. I never thought that I have anything against it because this is something beautiful that I wanted and everything went exactly as planned in my life. You know, all my life has been exactly my vision board and always has been exactly as planned. And so it was nothing um, to come as a surprise for me to not accept it. But the process of getting, uh, putting weight on, that comes as a surprise, <laughs> you know? I didn't expect it so early to put so many weights on. So for me, it was like, I couldn't accept it. And that was my main reason of nausea. So when I repeated, you cannot believe, I repeated that affirmation once the moment that I wrote it, my nausea was gone. I did my workout. I had my full day. And ever since, I haven't been nauseous. Wow. Wow. That is beautiful. And I thank you so much for sharing that. I think that is so powerful to hear because it shows that with the right tools and as well as just the person you are in general, to be able to, you know, take down a pen and paper and really uh, write down the answers and listen to them and accept them and keep on with your day not letting that affect you but accepting it and reflecting upon it and then letting go i think that is so beautiful and i think that anyone hearing this uh totally should do that especially uh, if you fear to gain weight or if you're in the process of pregnancy as you are i think that can definitely help everyone listening. So thank you so much for sharing. That was beautiful. I was like, wow, all in the story. <laughs> thank you. I think it's, uh, uh, it is it is going to be very helpful for people to do the same thing because all my life, I mean, for many years, I'm doing this process of writing and getting the answer. Without even at the first, I didn't know that I'm receiving answer from another source. I was always thinking it's coming from me. But I promise to you that the, pa the first four months and a half, I did everything to understand the reason behind my nausea. I did a lot of um, meditation to understand it and uh, to tap into my inner wisdom, to understanding from my inner wisdom. It never come the answer to me until I write it down. So what I would really recommend you to do is not only when you're angry at any time in your life that you need some guidance, nobody, Nobody can guide you better than you, which is your higher self that is always with you, guiding you, protecting you, loving you and supporting you. So if you open your heart and have faith and trust this invisible being that has been with you since the first day that you came to this planet, you're going to gain such a power in your life that nothing can break you down. So I definitely in, encourage you to do this very simple technique of writing down your questions and get guidance. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. So basically, I wrote down here, you know, the anger management tools. We talked about, you know, number one, being able to breathe, right? Being able to be present, right? thinking about uh, a blue cold in breath and a red uh, warm out breath right making sense right and then name your emotion talking to yourself about your emotion being able to express that with sound like if you're feeling angry I am angry I have pain here and be able to express that to just accept it and then have compassion, feel the emotion, right? Feel the emotion fully and be able to express it. As you said as well, you know, if you're the pleaser, be able to, you know, squeeze your hands and be able to feel that emotion fully. And then last but not least, be able to write that down with the first answer from your heart. So these are four tools, guys, that you have and we can always have and that you can share with your friends, family. I personally am being taught uh, through Shima and I've been able to use these tools myself. And I 
totally can agree that when it comes down to that writing, I've been able to apply it and being super surprised about the results and how genuine, how honest and how true they are. And sometimes you just get like, wow, this is exactly what I needed to hear. And as you said, you're like, where does this come from, right? And you actually realize that it's from the source. It's not, not that ego, you know? So that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful, Shima. And Thank you. Uh, what I was going to ask you is that uh, when, when, did you, um, when did you realize that, you know, or no, I was going to ask you how many times in order to, for example, when you're seeking that answer of like, where am I getting this nauseous from? How many times would you repeat these exercises or these, use these tools in order to really get a clear answer? Does that depend um, or would you get it immediately or do you just, how do you do it? How do you figure it out? Yes. So depends if you're used to that technique or not, of course. Right. Because for yeah. some people that they just start to write down, maybe it's difficult for them to, to, to let go of the narrative of the mind because that's the whole thing. You really need to trust and open up and listen. And allow the information to come to you and trust that the information that is coming to you are the important information. So you write them down. Sometimes with, the, with this narrative of the mind, we are blocking this information. So when the information is coming, I'm saying, oh, no, 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 this is coming. I know that already. This is not correct. This is not. So I don't write it. I stop it and I stop the process. And that happens. So the more you are able to open yourself and allow anything, as you mentioned before, that come to you, immediately write it down and don't stop the flow and continue writing until you get your crystal clear answer. Continue writing. And once you go back and read it, you will be surprised with the result. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Absolutely. So yes, Shima, is there anything else that you would want to add in this session? I think the only thing I can tell you that uh, be ever be mindful of the emotions that you're having. Know that the stress, um, it's the underlying reason for many diseases in your body. Mm -hmm. So take responsibility for your own health, for your own well-being and manage your emotions in a healthy way. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Where can people find you, Shima? So you can uh, check on, uh, we will write it under this video as well, uh, the website infinitelove.es. That's a website where we have all the information about our courses and the coaching and programs. And also the YouTube channel, you can uh, subscribe on my YouTube channel. I have over 100 videos that helped myself on the path of self-development and spiritual growth. So you can just uh, sign up there and get access to all these videos. And the website is Infinite Love Coaching Academy. So when you just write in YouTube, Infinite Love Coaching Academy, you, you see, you come to my channel. And on Instagram, it's at sign Infinite Love Coaching or at Shima Shadru, that's my, my, my personal page. And uh, yeah, so uh, you can- Amazing. Yeah, guys, go definitely check her out. Shima is a boss lady and just an amazing, genuine person with so much love and caring for others. So truly an inspiration for me and someone I look up to. So thank, yeah, you, thank so you so much, much Shima, for this time shared. And thank you so much. Thank you for your all your help and your support and your uh, beautiful energy that you're sharing with others. I know that you're doing a great, great things also for others, motivating. And uh, you, you are already shining your light to, to the people. And I'm really proud to be part of this program. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shima. Pleasure. Thank you. God bless you.